Good morning, everyone. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, come on, come on, come on. I need a little bit more. How's everyone doing? Um, I want to start off with just a little stretch. I know that's a little weird, but I'm a, I'm a physical person, so I want everyone to just kind of reach up all the way up. You can stay in your chair. You can stand up. Good. Oh, jeez. And then reach out all the way back. Tuck your shoulders in and back. Look up, all the way up, deep breath in, deep breath out, and then shake. Shake and shimmy, shake and shimmy. Good, awesome, cool. Um, thank you for that wonderful introduction, Michael. Uh, thank you, uh, FS Investments, for hosting us uh, at the beautiful Navy Yard. This is one of my uh, favorite spaces in Philadelphia. Um, and commitment. Uh, <laughs> I. I struggle with commitment, I'll be completely honest. I'm all over the place, uh, I'm a mess, um, and I think uh, there, there was a, a real teaching moment when I got the email um, to be here and actually commit to the talk about commitment, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, <laughs> thank you, Erica. Um, I, I struggled with it, I, I, I spent like a good two days really just kind of pouring over the email and I, uh, I really thought about <laughs> how to respond, whether I was too committed to be able to do it, um, whether or not that I was worthy. Um, so a lot of self-doubt, a lot of um, just really questioning whether or not people actually wanted to hear me speak. Um, and I think people can relate to that. Can you guys relate to that? Just kind of like internally figuring out whether or not you are someone who is committable. Um, so I replied to the email, something along the lines like, uh, are you sure you got the right guy? Um, are you sure that I am in the right, did you get the right Neil Santos? Because I know there's a lot of other Neil Santoses out there. Um, but then I, then I just kind of tested the waters. I sent an, uh, an email out back to Michelle and um, Erica and the team, um, the Creative Mornings team, and it was something along the lines of, okay, I am con I'm going to commit to the talk about commitment from the perspective of someone who is overcommitted and so overcommitted that uh, I tend to be noncommittal. <laughs> so uh, the title of today's talk. Committing to a talk about commitment from the lens of a photographer who is so overcommitted to his projects that he is sometimes noncommittal. <laughs> uh, by Neil Santos. Um, I'm not a, a very good public speaker. I, I try my best, but really I think photography is my language. Photography is my expression. Uh, pictures and the way I see, really, it's quiet. And I really enjoy that process. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit why I'm committed to that and how that kind of ties into the many, many different projects that I am involved in and hopefully uh, tie it back to uh, why all of that is important and how I can kind of either inspire or just be completely vulnerable and just share um, my experiences with commitment. Um, so yeah, this is my calendar. How many of you freak out if you see this? Raise your hand if that is a little overwhelming. Okay, cool, that's really overwhelming for me too. <laughs> um, this is obviously the chunk of time where I was working on this presentation. So <laughs> what you're seeing there is that gap of time that I, I dedicated to just really kind of pouring it out. Um, but this is a visual representation of my commitments. And I am, you know, all over the place. I'm so crazy. I, I really love feeling this pressure, I put this pressure on myself. I, I'm involved in maybe five different projects uh, at the same time. Uh, there's family, you know, I saw my mom on, Mon on Mother's Day. I drove up to Jersey City. I'm originally from Jersey City, New Jersey. City kid at heart. Um, so I really kind of, you know, make time for family. I make time for work. Uh, I have photo shoots. I've got my home life. Every morning I take my dogs out for a walk. I've got four dogs talk about commitment there. I've got chickens, talk about commitment there. I've got my husband. I've got, <laughs> I've got you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, and then I've got work. I've got actual farming where I kind of do either 
putting things in the ground or harvesting, you know, in the, the spring season. Um, and then I've got team meetings. Um, I'm also a fitness coach. I don't know if many people know that about me, but I, I teach Muay Thai up in West Philly um, at a great gym called Eight Limbs Academy. Um, and then I try to make <laughs> time for friends and family and things like that. Um, but it's overwhelming. I think my point here is that commitments, you know, you, you wake up and you, you pursue your commitments, you pursue the things that you want, the things that, and, you know, as creative people, uh, we should be committing to the things that kind of progress ourselves, our, our, our vision, um, and our, um, you know, what we're passionate about. Um, so I wanted to transition into maybe some quotes that I, I've found to be really uh, poignant and kind of spoke to me about this talk uh, about commitment. Um, when you learn something from people or from a culture, you accept it as a gift and it is your lifelong commitment to preserve and build on it. Uh, and that is from Yo-Yo Ma. That really spoke to me mostly because you're paying respect. And I, I'm a huge um, believer in respect and uh, paying homage to the people that had kind of have come before you, um, laid down your history, laid down your DNA, laid down um, the things that make you who you are today. Uh, and I put that there, and it'll, I'll tie into it a little bit later too about your roots, uh, your history, uh, your own personal internal history, and how that relates to how much commitment you can take on, how committable you are as a person, um, and how that either progresses your career or progresses your 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 passions or your religion or your your spirituality, whatever ha whatever commitments you have or whatever you are committed to. Um, it always will relate to you. What makes us Americans is our shared commitment to an ideal, that all of us are created equal and all of us have the chance to make our lives what we will. Uh, any guesses who that is? It's a president, not the current one. <laughs> <laughs> Barack Obama. <laughs> God, I wish he was still in office. <laughs> but uh, this quote, um, you always have two choices, your commitment versus your fear. And I love this one. I think fear, something that I feel pretty regularly, um, whether it's in the shape of anxiety or whether it's in the shape of uh, just you know that internal dialogue that I was talking about when I first committed to the talk, um, it, it's, it really is to me like black or white. Um, sometimes it's you know, black and white photography or <laughs> uh, black and white, just kind of literally my mind goes one way or my mind goes the other way and I can give myself no other option but to just commit. And like, I think that is the most freeing feeling and it's kind of brought me here to this point in my life right now and I'm, I'm really excited to, to be here uh, and get over that fear and get over that idea of um, that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, because you are, uh, and you really have to believe that to yourself. And um, that's from Sammy Davis Jr. So uh, I want to present a challenge, the challenge with commitment. I think that real commitment is hard. Uh, it's supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be easy. Life is hard. Life comes with lots of different challenges, um, and it's often feared. Uh, it can break, it can bend, and it can change, and it can evolve. Um, and that kind of reflects on you as a person, um, and it reflects on the types of commitments you make. How many of us are, have often feared commitment? Show of hands. Okay, cool. In relationships, yeah. In friendships, in work, yeah. So I think that's comforting for me to know that I'm not the only one, right? <laughs> Um, but my point is it starts with you. You are the person that holds the truth. You are the person uh, that commands your commitments, that commands your life. Uh, and I, I want to pose the, the idea that everything that you believe to in that fear of commitment, everything that you fear in commitment, you have the answers already. Um, you, 
you already know. It's deep down inside of you, whether you realize it or not. And that's okay. If you do know, great. If you don't know, that's great too. Just know that you don't know. And true commitment has to start with you. All the answers you are looking for are already with you. I already said that. That's me. <laughs> so, who are you? What do you fight for? What makes you committable? What do you bring to the table? And I, when I was coming up with the talk, I kind of, you know, I was like, commitment, I'm gonna give you the dictionary definition, and why are there, why is there one T in commitment, but two T's in committable and committed? And then I was like, there's an extra T when you apply yourself, and I think that's true. Um, so I came up with the fact that uh, the T stands for totally in, and why should people go totally in for you? Uh, what makes you worthy to be committed? Uh, and that has two T's. Uh, so I say that that extra T means totally in. People, want, people should feel like they should be totally in for you and vice versa. It's a relationship. Uh, when you commit externally and not internally, those are two different types of things. When you commit to yourself, that's your internal commitment. And that can be you know, your creed, your ethos, your moral code, your religion, your spirituality. Uh, it can be just your belief systems. Um, and that ties into your DNA. I, I think that ties into your history. It ties into your past traumas um, or, you know, the things that are, are your privileges and things that you were born with. Um, and again, those things change and evolve over time, as I will kind of show you throughout my career. Um, that how I've changed and evolved too. Uh, that brings me to my photography. And I call this chapter of photography, passion, and capturing humanity. This collage, I love collages. I think it's just, you know, a whole mess of like my internal, like this is what I see and I, this is how I talk. And um, so all of these photos have a lot of meaning to me. Um, it's things that I normally don't, post on Instagram, it's not you know, something that I feel can be sold or I can make money off of. This is just straight up who I am. This is what photography means to me. This is everything that I am. So that's my grandmother. This is my husband. This is our farm. That's my niece. This is my, uh, my fight teammates on, uh, at Eight Limbs Academy. And um, yeah, no, I, I'm really, um, I really love photography for so many different reasons. I think Michael kind of touched on a lot of why photography is important. Uh, and I think in today's digital age, it can kind of get mixed around. Uh, messages can be you know, a little uh, uh, askew. Uh, if you look at something on Instagram, you know, it's like, you know, if it's like a, you know, an influencer or somebody who's posting a picture of themselves in a store and they're buying lots of really expensive stuff, but you know, it's kind of like, is that real? <laughs> um, so real photography, um, to me, is something that always captures beauty, um, something that always aims to shine a positive light on humanity, um, and always tries to uplift and uplift people, uplift their passions, uplift their commitments. Um, and I think this really drives a lot of what I I do today, um, just being able to witness people's commitments over the years as a photographer uh, really kind of shaped who I am and how I have a vision for m myself and this world and how I want to bring it forward. Um, and I think that kind of hopefully sparks a, sparks a chord in, or strikes a chord in people here. Um, so yeah, I was a photographer for I guess six or seven years for the Philadelphia City Paper, rest in peace. Uh, um, the Philadelphia City Paper was an alt-weekly uh, in Philadelphia, similar to The Stranger or uh, Village Voice in New York. Uh, has anyone ever read the Philadelphia City Paper? Oh, good. Oh, yay! <laughs> so it's not a, a complete loss for print journalism um, and alt-weeklies. But I, I'm completely fortunate to have been able to be in this position. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie, I, <laughs> my first job wasn't as a photographer. I, I started off as a web designer part-time. 
uh, I was fresh out of college, um, and I, I knew from the get-go that I was that I wanted to do photography uh, in some shape or form. Uh, I studied photography at, at Temple. I'm a, a Temple journalism graduate uh, in 2008, and uh, I picked up a lot of skills there. I did web design. I did graphic design. Uh, I learned HTML. I learned how to code. I did, you know, everything I could to kind of just greatly increase my chances to get a job. Um, and I knew I wanted to be in Philly. I loved the city. Again, I, I thrive off of the urban environment. Um, and I, I, I thrive off of people. I thought, you know, like, these people uh, really kind of, they have their own commitments. And their stories are what I really kind of aim to, to uplift and um, bring to light um, and shine a light on literally literally shine lights on these people. Um, so these are some of the fav my favorite covers that I've done. Um, we've got Sonia Sanchez on the bottom left. Um, she was a, our poet laureate for a couple of years uh, back, um, I guess in 2010. And she taught me a great health lesson, actually, and I really want to share this, is that she, she told me to eat a clove of garlic every day and uh, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And uh, when I'm sick, I completely do that, and it is like my cure-all. I love, <laughs> and I, I love that I was able to kind of get that tidbit from Sonia Sanchez, um, and I, I really take that to heart. So sometimes I do like chew a whole clove of raw garlic, um, and I feel bad for whoever has to be in front of my camera that day, because <laughs> I am literally just burping up and regurgitating garlic. Um, <laughs> But it feels good, it burns down, and then it just like get, gets to your core. So I want to share that with you all, too. <laughs> um, Meek Mill, if everyone recognizes that, and Mayor, former Mayor Michael Nutter, Kurt Vile, uh, Steve Espo Powers, who d did the murals along uh, Market Frankfurt Line uh, in Philadelphia, as well as beautiful murals across the world. Um, and then, you know, we have this is one of my favorite food covers. I just, along North Fifth Street in North Philly, just kind of did a tour of, of local eateries and mom and pop shops that are doing really great food. They're the unsung heroes uh, in Philadelphia. So I, I make that my mission is to, to commit myself to, um, to people of all kinds. I, I don't really discriminate whoever's in front of my lens. I, I really want to just treat everyone with an equal playing field. And I think that's kind of the root of what I was taught in journalism school. Um, is to be fair, be honest, uh, which in today's media landscape, it's like, does that even exist anymore? And uh, it made me, this is one of the reasons why I committed to this talk. So I, I just wanted to kind of be that, or at least present the idea that we, we have to commit ourselves to these things. Um, but aside from the covers that I've done, I, I still love doing street photography. I, I know I'm known for food. Uh, but my roots are in the city. My roots are in uh, walking the streets. And I, I'm drawn to colors. I'm drawn to spaces. I'm drawn to lines. I'm drawn to shadows. And most importantly, I always try to center it in the human experience. Um, and that's where uh, my passion lies for photography. It always starts with people. It doesn't matter who they are uh, or how much money they have or what color they are or what they believe in. Uh, Treat everyone fairly, treat everyone with respect, uh, treat everyone uh, as if they are, you know, a kind of a mirror image of who you are, who you want to be, or who you used to be. Um, just really kind of get in their, their perspective and bring that to light. Uh, I, I want to pivot over to, to food uh, and of farm, food, animal, husbandry, and neighborhood. Let me start that over. A farm, food, animal husbandry, and neighborhood. So photography led me to start covering food uh, as a food uh, as a as a newspaper photographer. I did food reviews, uh, food um, rev uh, food features, uh, and just kind of getting to know people through food. I thought that was like a very uh, simple introduction into people's lives. Uh, it was a really easy topic to kind of just relate on a very equal playing field to people, uh, what they're eating, how they're eating, uh, what culture of like they come from based on the food that they're eating. 
um, and all of that kind of grew my commitment to food in a completely different way. Um, and I started with, um, I, wanna st I wanna start with, I guess, when I met my husband. And that I'll talk about a little bit later as well. Um, but when I met my husband, we, we met online, we met on OkCupid the very old fashioned way. <laughs> um, and that was back in 2008. Uh, so when I met him, um, God bless his heart, he, he is a farmer uh, and I learned so much from him. And you know, it was, <laughs> it was kind of, I'll be honest with you, it was love at first sight. I saw how committed he was um, to farming. I saw how committed he was to creating beauty in his own way, in the way that I felt like I could relate to in the way that I wanted to create beauty through photography. Um, he was able to do it with land. Uh, he was able to do it with his hands and that was really sexy. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I met him and we, we started, he already had begun the process of kind of clearing um, two vacant lots on 51st and Chester Streets in Southwest Philadelphia. And this is what the lots look like throughout the years. Uh, but when we started, the learning to farm and learning food was how I got to learn my husband and how I learned to commit to his commitments and how his commitments became my commitments. And then it just became this beautiful mishmash of like a wild growing organic love. <laughs> um, and it, it evolved and it, it changed me and it was the commitment I made to him and his commitments because I, I was really, I really wanted to bring to light his, his commitments and his passions. Um, and that, I think is a reflection of my commitment to beauty and his commitment to making things beautiful. Uh, beautiful. So we started uh, clearing out the lots. This is um, 5103 Chester Avenue and this is 5105 Chester Avenue. So there are two vacant lots. Um, at the time he was living at the corner of 5101 and in a small one bedroom apartment. He, we cleared the lot and started growing all sorts of organic vegetables fruit, trees, um, uh, we started raising chickens. So we have about a dozen chickens on our property. Uh, and throughout the years, we kind of just started developing Farm 51. Um, it's, it, this is something so uh, deeply rooted in, in what I believe in as someone who grew up in the city, um, as someone who just started to get to know food a little bit better, where it comes from, how it grows, and how it really affects who we are as people, how we consume it, what we consume, where it comes from, uh, the whole nine. Uh, I just kind of wanted to share that with the neighborhood, and it changed my view, and it strengthened my view on being someone from the city. It, it changed my view of what it means to be a good neighbor, uh, and, and again, it kind of deepened and strengthened my relationship with people and my subjects, and, and then not so much subjects, but just my neighbors, uh, my fellow citizens. Um, and I think food and growing food in the city is, is something that um, allows us to be good neighbors. It allows us to build community. Uh, when you grow in the city on empty spaces, it transforms that space, it transforms it so intentionally and so fervently um, depending on what your commitments are. And I was committed to making, we were committed to, to making this space kind of inclusive, you know, really open for anyone. So anyone that would walk by, um, the 13 trolley kind of runs right in front of our house. Um, so we got a lot of foot traffic. We got a lot of curiosity from neighbors. Um, and people were like, what are, you, what are you crazy guys doing? Why do you have so many dogs and chickens and, and flowers and things like that? Um, we, have, uh, we had about three neighborhood youth over the years. Uh, this is Yaya, Jamal, and Ray Zion. Uh, Yaya I've known since he was seven and now he's 17 and going off to college. Uh, he doesn't live uh, next door to us anymore, but his story really um, rings true to me and all of their stories kind of ring, ring true to me. Uh, and it, I'm so fortunate to have been in a position where we could share food and learn together um, what it means to, 
kind of plant a seed, watch it grow, nurture the, nurture the land, um, pull it out of the ground, and then just literally feed our neighbors. I think that's, uh, I think that's an act of, a powerful act of activism in its own right. And it's the, the simplest thing I think we can do. <laughs> Food photography, whoa! <laughs> like it, it really opened up my mind to things beyond um, just journalism in a way. And I, saw, I started to see food as art. I started to see food as a language in, a, in and of itself that I wanted to share. And then the dogs. <laughs> so it all kind of, I was committed to kind of setting myself up for a life that I wanted. And I, and I knew that I wanted it with, um, with food. I wanted it with a wonderful home. Uh, and it, it took a lot of commitment to making everything work for what we had. Um, really being resourceful, you know, I'm a farmer, uh, my husband's a farmer and I'm a photographer. We don't make a lot of money, but <laughs> we, what we do have, we kind of just have to make it beautiful. We have to make it work for us. And, and that is one of my biggest commitments uh, in life. And that, that passion for food, that passion for things that I was seeing and photographing kind of brings me to this next chapter uh, of collaboration and teamwork. Um, so I kind of, you know, in those years have kind of really solidified what it was that I, who I was, um, who I am as a photographer, as a person, as an individual, really kind of made me want to go beyond just uh, being a photographer in a way that I thought that food is a language as well, and I wanted to communicate that. And you know, in Philadelphia, I kind of saw something missing. I saw, you know, my food, my culture, uh, Filipino food in particular, not being really represented in a way that I had such a sh uh, like a stark vision for. Like I still have it in my brain, and it burns, it hurts. It's like, oh, I want to see this kind of plate of food in this light, and. It has to be with these kinds of people, and it has to have this feel and this music and, and this lighting, and it's it's so it's something that you know it's something that I, I I needed to see happen because I it wasn't in front of me. It wasn't something that I was pursuing or or seeing fo being photographed. Um, so I started a, a food business called Pelago. It's short for Archipelago, which represents. Uh, what the Philippines is. It's an archipelago of maybe 7,100 islands, depending on high tide or low tide. Um, and I, I kind of started making myself available to teamwork, uh, to collaborating, and that is uh, a challenge for sure, but it's one of the most rewarding challenges uh, once you do collaborate and kind of share your passions with other people. Um, so we do food pop-ups. Um, this is at Ella. And we, I get to, you know, literally work with different chefs. I get to share their, their passions and their commitments to good food. I get to sell tickets and people come to these events and it's, it's wonderful. And that, that kind of fulfills this whole another set of commitments that I have to making culture, my Filipino culture re relevant, Filipino American culture. Um, my particular experience growing up on the East Coast, growing up uh, with you know immigrant parents coming straight from the Philippines, and that experience I think uh, is something I'm committed to sharing and, and wearing on my sleeves, uh, literally, <laughs> um, and bringing to life what <clears throat> what that food is. So you know flavors that flavors and vegetables that I get to grow on the farm, kind of being in th this food, excuse me, like bitter melon, uh, what we call ampalayat. It's, it's a bitter gourd, it's, it's really not a very popular ingredient, but I love embracing it. I love embracing the bitter um, because I think that's a metaphor in so many different ways. Uh, but being able to introduce that flavor um, into dishes and into you know some, some American palates that might not be used to that, um, something that from the seed into the farm, onto a plate, and into people's mouths. And I was just, and then I get to photograph it too. I'm like completely lucky, um, and I never forget that. So, and it relates to my family. I kind of touched on them a little bit. Um, 
So this chapter is called Of Family, Of Relationships, and Of Marriage. Uh, like I said, I'm a Filipino-American, first generation, or second generation. I kind of get confused about what that means. <laughs> uh, but my parents came from uh, the Philippines um, in the 70s and really settled in uh, Jersey City as, like, I don't know exactly why they chose Jersey City, um, but it was a whole enclave of uh, their cousins and their um, their family uh, coming to America, uh, and I um, I really relate to that. So this is like this is my family. I'm I can get teared up. I, I might tear up a little bit, but <laughs> um, that's my mom uh, on the top left. We took that photo uh, just a few months ago. And I was, um, I, I was so fortunate enough to kind of host them in Philadelphia. They don't really like to leave Jersey City too much, which is fine. Um, they really are reluctant to travel. Uh, and then this is my family in the Philippines. So I was like, so that's my uncle, um, my mom's immediate uh, brother, and then just my cousins and people that I don't really get to see that often. And that, that split, that like, that mental split between having family there and then having family here, um, it's like this, these two identities that kind of really shape my commitments today and like what I'm doing moving forward. Because um, it's, still, it's still photography, it's still food, and it's still all really related to me and it's all kind of working in this kind of crazy, uh, like a system of sorts where the food is nurturing me, but it's also the language that I speak now in terms of photography and food. Um, and I, I carry that with who I am now. And this is my new family, or at least the family I married into, all my in-laws um, and uh, my, niece, my nieces over there. And that's my nephew on the top left uh, next to my husband in the center. Um, but yeah, this is a, a I, I never, th I saw family as, as one thing and then it just constantly is changing and it's constantly evolving and it's a mix of chosen family and it's a mix of, of blood, of blood family. And I'm so lucky to be able to tap into that. I have this rich history, this rich DNA of people that have come before me, generations and generations of, of people who were farmers too and um, people that work the land and people that kind of uh, have laid a foundation for me. Um, and that, that reflects my Filipino identity, identity um, and it also reflects um, other identities too. Uh, I'm openly gay uh, and there are people before me who kind of laid the foundation of what it means to be you know, out and proud in, in the world, um, to be able to live comfortably in your own skin to be able to be committed to to that and to kind of tie that into everything that I do um, is something that I will always cherish and always kind of honor. Um, so when I talk about internal commitments, those are some of the things that I'm committed to. Those are the people that I remember, um, the people that have sacrificed before me. Uh, and that is a privilege that I am born with and I, I will always honor that and I think hopefully through photography and hopefully through food and all the work and all the projects that we're doing, you know, when I'm faced with that fear, when, I fa when I'm faced with the question of whether or not I need to commit, those are the things I kind of think about. I put that in my forefront, I put that in my lens, and if, you know, my partner or the people that I'm doing business with kind of see that and reflect that and kind of, we can kind of build on that and kind of have a really great relationship in that way, I'll do it. Like it's, it's a no-brainer for me. It always has to kind of come back to you, and I think that's kind of what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, that's my husband. We got married on, uh, on the L. <laughs> um, we stopped at 69th Street <laughs> in Upper Darby, <laughs> um, <laughs> and we got married by Steve Espo Powers uh, because. And, that's, and that kind of like tied into so many different things too. It was just this culmination of um, being passionately in love with each other and passionately in love with Philadelphia, passionately in love with the arts, passionately in love with everything that we were doing. And it, 
you know, every time I look back at it, it was the most stressful and most um, scary. Again, talking about that fear to commit, like I was like so nerve wracking. Like that was one of the scariest things I've had to do. Um, but it was something so unique and so uniquely Philadelphia. And it was through the mural arts program they hosted that wonderful wedding for us. Uh, thank you, mural arts program. <laughs> um, to be able to do that in that way, I wouldn't have had a wedding any other way. It was, it was so much fun, and it was, you know, I didn't really invite too many people. I just kind of wanted it to, to be, <laughs> to commit, to, and then to move on, <laughs> and to and to keep going, um, because the wedding is one thing, but marriage lasts for as long as you can make it last, um, as long as you are committed to it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I want to talk about fighting a little bit. I know that's a little bit of a harsh pivot, um, but I'm so in love with everything that I'm doing and I'm so committed to everything that I'm doing that, I'm, that I want to talk about fighting, not so much literally, I mean literally fighting, but also um, what that means for yourself and what you're willing to fight for. Um, and I posed that question earlier, what are you willing to fight for? Uh, who are you? Uh, what it is that you are committed to internally that makes you committable? Um, so I train, uh, I train Muay Thai um, in West Philadelphia. I've been doing martial arts actually for a long time. I did it when I was a kid and it took different forms. It took, I was doing Taekwondo um, and Karate and um, Kung Fu uh, when I was a teenager. And to be able to pick up martial arts again as an adult, um, it's a testament to commitment in itself. It's a literal, um, it's a literal like uh, analogy, you know, f to commitment. Um, my coach always says you have to commit to your punches. And when I think about actually punching someone in a competition setting, it it really embodies everything that commitment is. It's it's you, but you're also just really kind of challenging yourself. You know, there's literally someone in front of you when you are in a, in the fight. Um, that was me at my last fight. This was a couple weeks ago, actually. So. <laughs> Um, the I lost, but that's not the point, you know. Like <laughs> the point was that it's an analogy for commitment in and of itself. Because I was committed to when you're in the ring, you really have no other option. Once you're there, you have to fight. <laughs> you can't just run away. I mean, you could, but you have to jump and make that commitment. You have when you're in there, you're committed. There's no there's no coming out of that. Um, and I think that. This analogy really kind of speaks to everything that um, I'm trying to talk about today. Uh, commitment is scary. Commitment embodies your fears, your worst fears. Uh, and in a fight setting <laughs> that you're really looking at somebody else who is embodying those fears. Everything you're willing to fight for, everything that you're, you're putting yourself through when you are in uh, competition training, I think that's a huge, um, it's a huge privilege to be able to do that. It's um, you're really just testing yourself, and you're 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 wanting to be better. You're in, you're embodying things that you know you are passionate about. You're bringing your whole total self to this commitment into this fight. Um, whether you win or lose, or whether you know the decision goes your way or it doesn't, I don't think that's the point. But the point is that you did it, and the point is that you committed. The point is that you you were in there and you committed to your punches. And that, that feeling of being in there is the most liberating feeling. Um, to be able to walk away from that fairly unscathed, <laughs> um, still standing and, and completely proud of yourself really is a, a, a privilege. Uh, and I don't take that, uh, I don't take that for granted. Um, and I know the way I'm talking about competition and fighting, uh, it seems kind of internal, but reality of the situation is that fighting is a completely uh, you're completely completely committed to other people as well I'm not alone in that ring I'm alone I'm I'm with my coach uh, I'm with my opponent I'm with someone in the corner um, I'm with uh, my opponent's coach and then there's a whole audience there you know so that's you know when I wanted to commit to this talk you know I was really just kind of like uh, me 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 but it's really not about me it's about it's about you guys it's about um, the world. It's about committing and contributing uh, your total self 
to everything that you're doing, to be able to share that with everyone else in the hopes that uh, your commitments um, kind of dictate a better world, uh, a, better, a better existence, and a better society. Um, and that <laughs> um, hopefully makes us better citizens, makes us better neighbors, makes us better creatives, makes us better workers, makes us better husbands and wives and brothers and sisters. Um, that, uh, I think, is what commitment is all about. So to, to wrap it up, commitment can take many shapes and forms. It can be messy, it can be scary. Uh, it's something to fear uh, or something that causes fear. It's something that is very hard. But your internal commitment, the commitment you make to yourself, uh, will shape who you are. It is your commitment to your total self that will make you committable. Again, it's that last T, that total self uh, that makes you committable. Let your commitment speak for yourself. Um, actions speak louder than words. You know, you've heard that so many different times, but um, really your commitment and showing your commitment as opposed to telling your commitment um, is, it, is what I think is a, is a, good, a good embodiment of, of what commitment should be. Uh, it's your actions. It's your, um, what you're able to show as a verse, versus to what you're able to tell. Thank you. <laughs>